Trying to just come down the TBT. Utility monster stepping too far forward is going to get hit by the Spectral Maw. Trying to queue over the wall, not going to find it. Antunes has another uh, Banish Toss coming up, but Brian Sang is in trying to defend. Utility monster so tanky, but Brian Sang is now the one getting blown up and is going to drop to Zen Zen. Diego gets a reset. Jeff God Gamers in the back line, but is it going to live? Being dropped in mid. Oh, but Antunes is in. Big curse of the sad mummy means that Brian Sang is going to drop almost immediately. Tries to use that ultimate in combination with the stop watch to get out, but leaves is right over the wall, doesn't find that Blade of the Ruined King, and now it's so tough for TDE, but they have the health bars, Ultra Box flashes forward, and is going to find Brian Sang, Zen Zen under tower, picks up Utility Monster, and TDE, so much work in one versus three, and even though it ultimately drops, it's TDE managing to maybe just turn around this fight, oh my goodness, the health bars are so close as Leaves, Leaves and Red are fighting over in the, on the top side of your screen, Utility Monster able to get in there before his teammates Leaves going forward and does pick up the kill on Utility, gets the reset, and it will be TDE picking up this fight. They're going to almost lock up Antunes, they're going to lock up Ultra Box, and now Leaves is the one left alive. But how do you kill Leaves? He's turned into your Swain. He's go legendary in the bot side for Jaffe, and now Leaves is turning into your entire team and taking out your entire team. Week two of Mythic has been a banger so far. We're on game number three of day number two. My name is Escape. You can call me Spencer for short. I am joined by uh, a new face to the crowd. Erebus is here. Hey, uh, nice to be here. Very excited to cast with my favorite lower ranked AD carry RLS slash BBZ Escape. Oh, that's so odd. <laughs> and my head. All right. Well, we're here between a scaling copium and super late reveal. Um, I, I'm just going to prep you right now. I'm going to call them RLS at some point during this game because we yeah, had uh, well. <laughs> RSL last season, I think. And I could not get that right for the life of me when we did the cast of them. Um, but these are two teams that are, you know, they're two and one. They're set up relatively well. They both had a little bit of um, it's hard to say they've, they've had um, like connecting mechanisms fail between the teams and that's kind of been the the source of their their losses but outside of that they've looked really strong they have a lot of really strong individuals and i think draft could dictate a lot this game yeah definitely uh there seems to be a lot of subs on slr uh at least one in the top lane maybe just one but i'm really interested to see how the bot lane goes lubru has been kind of climbing the ranks and mr thug smoke and warplack are kind of the i guess cornerstones of scaling copium yeah, and they've been they've been strong members of the league ever since you know like beginning of Mythic days. Warplak is is kind of a, an older name, if you will. Hard to ignore Street Smurf when you're talking about names that have been around for a while. Um, and yeah, we do have Anti back in the top lane. He's back from his rivals' adventure. Uh, we'll see whether that's better or for worse for uh, SLR. But uh, so far, a lot of jungle bands being targeted right now from Scaling Copium. They think that uh, Fang over Fang is going to be a weak point for them. And uh, we'll see how SLR wants to answer that. No misfortune ban so far. Yeah, and there's no Volibear ban either, which is what Fang ever Fang's been finding success on. I know he's been yeah. preaching the bear. And that's something some Anti time. likes as well, because like that's something that he's comfortable flexing in that top lane. So that could be something that they pick up really early just as a flex, and there it is. Said There's the misfortune. Uh, yeah, leave it open. It's going to be picked up by Scaling Copium. That is going to be a good option for Mr. Thug Smoke to just, you know, she's so dominant in lane, she can win team fights at the press of a button. Just a crazy strong pick. Yeah, she's definitely come alive in this last patch. I think she was in a good spot previous, but it's oh, and they're there Lee it is. Sen and Volibear. Lee Sen for Fang over Fang. Yeah, and I'm guessing that that has to be Volibear going into the top lane. Anton's a huge fan of it blind. It's something that he'll uh, default to. Obviously, I've played a lot of seasons with him myself. It's something he's a big fan of. Um, and then, yeah, like you say, Lee Sin for Fang over Fang is a little bit interesting. He's not... Um, I, like, I haven't seen him play more, how do I say this politely, technical junglers, but, you know, Fang doesn't make mistakes, so we'll, we'll see whether or not uh, Lee Sin's going to be something that he can be dominant on, obviously has a lot of power in those early stages, and Ivern, the Ivern from Blue. Today. Okay. Yeah, they played that last week, right, with a pretty good amount yeah. of success. No, it's a, ah. it's a good pickup. I think it, it really lets you um, support your carries, and uh, I think Bloon did a really good job on it before. I'd like to see it again. It looks like it's going to be back to that misfortune of Mumu in the bot lane. That's such a strong lane. I, I'm just stuck on the lease, then. I think that's a very interesting pick. But Tarek, I like a lot. I think Tarek, when executed properly, is one of the strongest champions in the game. Yeah, no, having the invincibility there is really big. He's got access to so much CC, so much healing. Um, and I like it as a way to kind of shut down what uh, Mr. Thunk Smoke and uh, Warplak are going to try and do, which is obviously Curse of Sad Bullet Time does so much damage, you can't really answer it. If you can get that Tarek down uh, preemptively and kind of deny any engage, uh, that is a good way to deal with it. 
Um, but I'm just worried about the timing because I feel like by the time that Tef can get that uh, ulti to pop, I feel like that might be nobody left of SLR to actually receive that invincibility and play out the rest of the fight. So it I'll is going to be a big timing battle on that for sure. And then we have, it looks like Samira and Azir both banned. Okay. Interesting. Sure, that's I, interesting. I don't know about the Samira into that comp, but we'll see. She's strong. Generally, where you see her is into like more battle bus composition. So you're dealing with like a Seraphine or a Sona or something like that. You'll have Samira come in and, and just say, okay, you're going to heal in a big circle. I'm going to do damage in a big circle. Problem solved. Um, and she's really good for countering that. Two control mages taken away from Street Smurf so far. SLR is going to be able to pick up, uh, I'd imagine, is going to be their top lane. And they're trying to give some sort of... No, it, they should just pick ADC here. They see MF on the other side. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to pick... Oh. Luru has a pretty good champion pool, and it seems like a lot of things would work pretty well. Misfortune's a really strong lane bully, though, so I'm not sure if he's going to go for a scaling kind of thing and just be down CS, or if he's going to try to kind of match the pressure of Misfortune. Oh, it's an okay. Zerath. Okay. So Guilty's been good on that in the past. Uh, it, it just had a bit of a whack-a-mole game, uh, I believe, last week on that Zerath, where it was just... Uh, just lasers everywhere. <laughs> it's was, yeah. it was pretty crazy. We've seen Guilty be really strong on that. We'll see how Street Smurf wants to deal with it. Obviously, we know Street Smurf to be a really, really dominant laner, and that's something that uh, Guilty might have to deal with. Obviously, Zerath isn't the strongest in laning phase. He can neutralize once he's got a couple um, either item components through or full items through. Um, but, you know, it's up to Street Smurf now, and that Zoe that was such a dominant force yesterday is going to be locked in. Uh, so far, I'm favoring... Scaling Copium by a good amount. It's on account I am of happy to, fighting. yeah, for just for team fighting. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Lee Sim. I'm going to keep harping on that until they prove me wrong for that. But I am happy to see that Azir got banned. I know that it got left open against Street Smurf, and he had an insane Azir game. So it's nice to see that there are kind of some targeted bans coming out in the second phase. I've really yet to see any sort of damage out of Super Late Reveal. There's the uh, Jax finally there, so that's going to lock in. So this is going to be a 4-1 composition, uh, almost 100%. Obviously, Jax can come in for those team fights. Jax picked up into Anti's Volibear. See how much that one matters. I, I, this has to be such a big pick out of Luru right now. There's such a small amount of team fighting damage. They don't have the ability to siege really effectively, and there's so much engage on the side of Scaling Copium that uh, I feel like you have to do something that can carry the... What? Um, what? I, you know, I don't know. That's so it's, locked. It's, what? It's Tarek support for sure, right? Zerath mid. It's got to be Malphite top. So, is it going to be Lee Sin Tar? No. I think it has yeah. to be right. I Lee Sin Tar got a super Tarek. late reveal. That's ridiculous. Okay, that? I'm really excited to see how that one plays out. I, I really hope you have... prep for that. Yeah, no, that sounds like the worst thing ever. <laughs> yeah, that's no. a dodge and solo queue. I was so, told uh, that that's something see. they wanted to take. We're gonna have to see how that one works out as we're gonna roll onto the rift. But that's an exciting prospect for me. I, I don't know whether or not that's um, gonna be like how to how to put it. Like this is this is something that can be strong, um, but. Is th is this really what they're gonna go for? I, th they're just gonna what? be down an extreme amount of gold almost the entire lane phase, right? I, I don't really see a way that that works. So I, th there has to be some amount of belief that this is just gonna be dominant into the misfortune in some way. How is this gonna work? I don't. I mean, I guess if Lee Sin W's to a minion, they can stun someone, but then I don't really know what happens after that i guess yeah they have to play on some amount of engage meanwhile on the top side it looks like it's just going to be the engage rolling forward uh i i don't know yeah i guess just the board sorry i'm so lost on this yeah pickup. this is, so, is kind of so throwing me off i should clarify for everybody in chat right now so i was told going into this game that we were going to see some craziness locked in for slr uh and i was trying to wrap my head around um either some mage bot lanes um something with like a karthus or a Cassiopeia, which is something that we've seen in the past before, but hasn't been dominant really since that point. Um, that being said, uh, Lee Sin Tarek, I I'd really like somebody to try and put this one together on how this is going to work, because I can't personally wrap my head around it. Um, but I guess we'll just go from go from here. I don't know. It's going to be something good to watch. Uh, I yeah, think for right it... now, we're just going to have to pay attention to these junglers, see how they want to path. Definitely going to be interesting. But yeah, let's what? see. What? 
Engage in the bot side. I think that might just be oh. Tef going down the flash over the wall there. There's going to be a trade back there from Luru. Now it's the 1v1 between Mr. Thug Smoke and Luru. I, are they going to be able to trade this one effectively? The Conqueror has proc. He's getting the auto attacks in. Lee Sin is known for his level 1 strength. Has the second part of the Q available. Mr. Thug Smoke's going to go under that turret and just ward him off. What is this game, SLR? That was... This is just going to keep getting weirder, I guess. Oh, oh wait, Luru. You landed through? Is he going to be able to pick up that kill? Oh, no. Just no. Mr. Thug Smoke the 1v1 in the bot lane. And everything's going to fall apart from here, surely, for SLR. You don't want to see Misfortune have two kills with two minutes. That is, that's for sure. Um, that was, it looked okay until it didn't, right? Yeah, it's weird. I, I guess that was something they wanted to do was take that trade on the bot side. It looked like YOLO was very aware that like, hey, there might be some cheese. But uh, they were able to dodge out. Problem solved. Um, and now is it engaged on the top side? I think that's just going to be a quick trade back and forth. So... I don't know how to look at this game properly because to me that Lee Centauric is saying, okay, we're going to win this laning phase. We're going to transition this lead into the mid game. We're going to win in the mid game. Street yeah. And right now they are down bot? 16 CS and they have a wave crashing. Yeah. They've got a wave. Cra Why is street Smurf bot? I didn't even see that roam coming out there from street Smurf. He's just going to be in the bot lane and just finish up that recall. These are some weird reactions coming up from both teams. This is interesting. Yeah, I, I'm really not sure what to make of it. Uh, top lane seems normal, which is nice. The junglers seem to be doing their own thing. Uh, wait, wait a second. No, it's going to be a solo kill for Anti in this top lane. Going to pick up that kill against Friendly Voidling in the 1v1. That's uh, not what you want to see out of Jax. How does, I don't even know how that happened right there. Fang over Fang's going to pick up this bot crab. And I, I guess that's just gold picked up in a way right now. No summoners were used topside in that either. That's interesting. That, yeah, it's weird. I'm not sure uh, how that really happened. Anti's going to get that push in the top side. He's going to be comfortable. Now, hold on. Trade in the bot side. Bloon is here on the side. Luru trying to fight this. There's the engage again from Warplek. Getting on between the two of them. The double stun is there. But Luru, on a sliver of HP, is going to try and make it out. Warplek has to be playing for that bandit charge. Good block there from Tef to keep Luru alive. But this bot lane does not seem to be taking the advantage they hoped it would. Now Fang over Fang is going to look for something in this top side right now. Anti trying to bait the play as best as possible. Friendly Voiling does see the bear on the ward right there. And it's just going to be the potential of the bear slap there. No short re-engage. Won't be nothing made of it. Yeah, good word top side for Friendly Voiling. Um, the CS is almost evened out bot lane. Yeah, which is, it, it's notable. <laughs> because, yeah. like, it, it shouldn't be. But, <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird because... Um, they haven't really been able to get too much done in that bot side so far, obviously given across two kills that the really early stage of the game isn't good. Um, and it's really going to hurt their team composition and how it wants to play out right now. I think um, something that they're going to have to rely on is just uh, Fang over Fang coming down into this bot side and trying to give them some level of relief. Once again, they are going to catch this crash, which is good news. Sometimes in the, uh, the melee lanes are going to lose out on these big waves, but so far they haven't. Um, so they're going to be able to keep themselves kind of even, but they're already down those two kills thanks to that level one play. Um, but you know what? That solo kill on the top side is enough to keep SLR in a very small gold lead for the moment. I am concerned about drag priority, at least for the first two dragons with the bot comp. I, I just don't see Tark and Lee Sin having the ability to pressure. I know Ivern's in the jungle, so that might kind of... Oh, wait a second. Street Smurf? F is mid. <laughs> F went mid. Yeah, he's going to burn that flash out of the Zoe, so that's a good exchange there. There's no spell book on that Zoe, so that's going to make her very vulnerable from here on out. Now, this is the power that they're going to have with this. Lee Sin has a lot of power in the early game to be able to get on top of these dragons, obviously jungler. So this is going to be the three-man dragon take. It's going very quickly for this patch. Thug Smoke's going to look for a play over the wall there. They're not going to be able to get this one. There's no spite in range. Their balloon only just showing up to see the dragon. There's no smite available. Oh, Lee Sin. Oh. Okay, that was close. There's actually room for Bloon to just flash the wall there and take the dragon, but they don't have any vicious vision coverage, and that's going to be first dragon picked up. How do you feel about starting dragons when the jungler doesn't have smite? Yeah, I mean, that's a little troll. Uh, I, I feel like uh, Fang was under the impression that that dragon was going to take a little bit longer, so obviously his smite was going to be up by the end of the take. True, um, true. But it, they took it so quickly, and there was no smite available, and there just happened to be members of YOLO online, but they weren't quite in time with the player. They didn't expect it to be taken that fast, which is fair enough. Looks like yeah. Fang's going bot. He's looking bot. 
Yeah, no, just another caught wave down in the spot lane. I want to. Oh, hold on. Engage there from Luru. It does take the flash forward. And now Warplek trying to take up this damage. Look at how much Luru is down to 100 HP at the moment. They've barely done anything to this Amumu. Now they're trying to chase forward. The Arcane Barrages are over the top right now. That's going to be first kill picked up onto Tep, but traded back onto Warplek. One more down onto Luru. There's no way that the Zerath's going to be able to get down to bot lane. It's another double kill. Two more onto that misfortune. I think what happened there, that flash from Luru, he was expecting Tef to have the, the E available on Tarek. It came out a little bit late. With that flash, it does stun somebody, and they're going to be able to get the damage out. Oh. And that is another kill oh, given over geez. to the bear. Okay. Everything's starting to slowly roll down the hill right now, and it's snowballing quite well for YOLO at the moment. That is five kills in seven minutes on that misfortune. And uh, we want, I was talking about ADCs that could just single-handedly win games on how much damage they do. She's one of them. That is, yeah, no, I definitely agree. I do think that Malphite is a good disruption tool, though. And Malphite's ahead. I don't think Malphite can solo carry a game, but it definitely does help kind of neutralize the lead that, a, a, you know, an immobile lady carry Play has. Get from Guilty, good engage there from Anti, and they find it wrapped up, but another kill on the bot side gets answered. Tef is under tower with no health, and the, Luru disappears again. So good play on the top side there for SLR, but it's just still falling apart in the spot lane. It looks like they're down two levels, bot. Uh, one level on AD, one level on support. Okay, not, not as bad. That was a really good run, though. Uh, picking up Jax with the... Guilty's playing fantastically. I think he's been having a really good tournament. Yeah, no, uh, Guilty's really shown up, which is interesting because, like, uh, I don't want to say that Guilty doesn't perform uh, necessarily in Heroic, because he does. Guilty's really good in Heroic. Um, but he's been uh, shut out of a couple games, uh, and it's really been the losses that AWE, um, his, his heroic team, uh, has, like, missed out on. It's just him getting shut out in his laning phase, getting shut out during the game and unable to, um, like, turn the game into something bigger. Uh, and that hasn't happened in Mythic. These stronger laners really haven't faced him at all. He's doing an amazing job of just stepping into this role. Um, obviously, it was supposed to be Pirlama, but Pirlama's out of the country right now. He's doing a really great job of just being that stone in the mid lane and still keeping himself in a really good spot right now, keeping even with Streets Perf. And meanwhile, in the top lane, Anti, big trade with uh, friendly Voidling. Doesn't have the ultimate available. There is Ivern sitting in the wings right now, and Anti wisely just decides, hey, I'm going to not go in for this trade. Hold on, re-engage there from Friendly Voidling. Thinks he has the damage, but look at this. The Xerath ult, he's in that top lane. It's almost no HP left on that. Jax, Anti's trying to chase it down. The Q will pick it up, and that is a killing spree for the Malphite in the top lane. Meanwhile, oh. they managed to find the Misfortune, and Fang over Fang is going to be able to chase down onto Warplek. They're going to be able to try and pick up this last kill under the turret. Really good stopwatch usage there from Warplek. He's going to be able to get himself out of there alive. Oh, we have to see that gank. That was a really good stopwatch. Uh, I also do want to mention before the replay, I like the tier on Malphite. His main early concern is mana, and at pretty well new... Oh, Drowsy. I don't know if we're gonna have Good time. That was a great damage. cleanse. Yeah, and that's why you take it in that mid lane. You know, it's really valuable against always. Hold on, redive potentially in the bot lane. There's no ultimate available right now for Fang or Fang. They're gonna try and find this engage. They do find the stun under turret. There's no stopwatch this time. Good tanking up from the member of the SLR, and they're starting to claw back in the spot lane. Look at this gold lead they've found in the last two minutes. This is just bizarre to me. I mean, they're playing it fantastically, you know. Um Luru hits Q, Tef stuns. They get the stun, and if they have Fang just kind of shadowing, it's almost a guaranteed kill on whoever gets stunned, right? Yeah. And the, the, the damage has been good enough. They're actually able to finally pick up that kill in the Misfortune. That means that the Eclipse is going to be finished up for Lee Sin at the moment. Trade in the mid lane. Does he know the balloon's here? Not at the moment. Has to dodge out on any of the possible snares or sleepiness, and guilty out of the very clean. What? So look at the top side. What? Oh. Wow. Okay. Top side's looking a little rough. Yeah, no, top side's not favoring them right now. We've got 24 seconds on this dragon spawn right now. Anti's not going to be able to TP down. So, uh, might have the opportunity to walk down into the spot side. But it looks like it's just going to be the kill picked up in the top side. Friendly Voidling without any summoners at the moment. Rotating four down right now from Yolo. They really want to get their hands on the second dragon. Misfortune doesn't have flash for this fight. And Amumu doesn't either. So, I think it could be played very, very well from SLR. 
Yeah, they are they going to be... They also might just give it because they don't have any vision. Look at the way that they've sealed up this pit right now. They do find the ulties right there onto oh, Fang over Fang. Luru goes in and just immediately deletes the Zoe. They're trying to get the invulnerability down. Anti is here in the wings. Doesn't have the unstoppable force available. There's almost no HP left and Bloon is going to have the smite available. Guilty trying to steal. It's so low. Who picks it up? It's the misfortune. But now Anti is here wreaking havoc. Luru very low on HP at the moment. They're going to try and chase down onto Warplex. That is three kills going over to SLR. And now, Anti's gonna try and chase Mr. Thugs mode under turret. He's gonna tank up the tower for right now. They're gonna try and find that stun off the target. They don't get it, but Luru picking up the kill. Is he gonna be able to live through that on a you live. Okay, that was crazy. So we have, a, we have a little bit of a late target gold. They just blow Fang over Fang, but it comes in, they clean up, and I'd say that they came out ahead on that despite losing the dragon. Absolutely, four kills picked up. You take that every day, and you know what? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to give it credit. This is crazy. But this Lee Sin pick is starting to actually do some work. And now Fang over Fang finding a trade in this top lane. He is by himself. There's the flash forward from Friendly Voidling, feeling very confident about taking this play. There is the lethal tempo proct, and that Malphite is just too far away, having to alt himself away. The leap strike is there though to chase him under the turret. Turns away, doesn't know where Anti is, and rightly so, that Rock was rolling up on him in the top lane. And now, I think he's in trouble. Yeah, without that ultimate available, now Friendly Voidling has to be careful. There's the ultimate through from Anti, knows he has no flash. Friendly Voidling going a little bit too far on to uh, Fang over Fang. He's trying to use that Leaf Strike to get away, but I don't see him getting rid of that distance right now. He's running him into the bear. Kill picked up five deaths on that Jack. Six and O oh on Anti's Malphite. And he is being quite the unstoppable force. He really is. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to call that the Fang over Fang global taunt. He's kind of like Teemo, right? Like, if you see him, you kind of just want to beat him up. So yeah. I, I definitely understand the overaggression out of Jax on that. Yeah, we, we're already seeing so many kills. Hold on, have to hold that thought. Guilty taking a quick trade in the mid lane. Okay, we're 13 minutes into this game. There have been 20 kills. Calm down, everyone. a bit everyone. of a bloodbath. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, we've seen that from SLR in the past. We've seen that from YOLO. They were always trying to make these active plays. And I guess when these two um, just titans of aggression are going to clash, you're bound to see this. Anti proxying up in this top lane. They see Bloon on the bot side, but there's no way Friendly Voidling can do anything about this Malphite. Has that Sunfire Age just complete? Luru has no idea what kind of threat he might be in right now. And the top oh. lane gets solo killed again. <laughs> Anti ruining any chances of this Jax to get something done in the top lane, but the ultimate has already been burnt out of warp like they're trying to take down Tef using that shield, but he can't get himself out alive. Two ultis burnt, and I think Luru might just have to back off that turret right now. Harold going into the mid lane for Guilty. The pressure being generated in the top side. This has really been a game of side lanes. And they just missed out on the first turret gold. Yeah, it went over to Anthony. Oh, didn't wow, it? they got mid tower too. Okay. Yeah, the Rift Herald was dropped. It's going to be picked up there from Guilty. Two turrets cleanly picked up. A couple of kills trading back and forth as uh, the bloodbath continues to uh, rage on. And uh, this is going to be a game. I don't, you know, we were talking about the team fight viability of these two teams. I don't know if we're ever going to get to that point. I think somebody's always going to be on a death timer. <laughs> we're never actually going to get to see these teams 5v5. Yeah, it seems like it's going to just be individual kind of skirmishes. Uh, 3v3 bot lane and then... Guilty's just hanging out mid, doing his thing. His ult, his ult realm has been super, super good. I think they would have missed out on a few kills if he didn't hit his ults. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something that he's been really good at. We've seen him play uh, Swain, and we've seen him play Xerath. I think those are the... Uh, there might be another pick that he's played in Mythic, but those are the two ones that I really know him for. Um, and, and the two things... Uh, both those champions are really good at walking halfway out of their lane and supporting a gank on the other side of the map. And Guilty has the mind to do that. To walk out of lane, see what's going on elsewhere, and try and support his team. And you know what? 104 is really showing that already. That's a lot of activity that he's had in that mid lane, considering how many of these kills have been solo. Street Smart... Oh, they don't have vision. This. They don't have vision of it. Surely he's going to get stunned up. They walk out of the bush. There's going to be so much burst on that. Zoe just disappears. And the sleep is not enough to earn them anything onto Luru. And Street Smurf is off the map. You know, for, for bot lane Lee Sin, I think Luru is playing this perfectly. This is actually kind of a gross combo, especially when you deny vision. It, it's almost a guaranteed kill on any single person on, that walks in on YOLO right now. 
Yeah, no, and it's it's been something that's been working for them really effectively so far. Even though that misfortune got so far ahead, she hasn't been able to do anything really in these team fights or the, the one dragon team fight that we had right now. She's looking for a reset 30 seconds before this dragon is up. Let's hold on, friendly voidling trying to take a trade with Luru. And you know what? This isn't going too bad for him right now. Tep is there a little bit late. They're gonna find the kill onto this Jax. And that is a member missing 23 seconds before this dragon spawns. Anti is making his way to the mid lane, trying to find a way on Mr. Thug Smoke. It's gonna break the flash. flash out of that misfortune to keep himself alive. Anti-flash there too. So that is a really good heads up play by Thug Smoke. Yeah, just trying to play it out of the wings. Like you say, well played. There's a final outer turret being taken away from SLR. The way that they are macroing with this weird composition. And you know what? I want to say, I, I, I think this is SLR just knowing their matchup better. They have played with this goofiness before, clearly. This is this is some insanity that like no team has seen before, I promise. And SLR knows what they're doing. They know what their rotates need to be. They know the fights that they win. They know how they need to play these picks. And it's working. They kind of look like the reverse Yubi a little bit. They just kind of thrive in chaos, you know? There's no, yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any organized play happening at any individual time. But there's just so much happening that it's hard to react to. Yeah, and I feel like YOLO is just kind of getting drowned under the pressure right now. Voidling has had the hardest of games right now, sitting on 65 CS on that poor Jax. Um, the, the jungle uh, is very much favoring Fang over Fang on this Volley Bear right now. Has a lot more gold in pocket. It's been a part of a lot more ganks. Um, has been able to set his team up really effectively. Uh, and just outside of that, really, this bot lane should look threatening, but it isn't. The gold is dead, even. Um, between these uh, two bot laners. I don't want to call Lisa and Nady Carry, but it, it's just been a really good recovery, if you will, from SLR, and it's it's put them back in the driver's seat for this game. It's a huge gold lead right now at the 17-minute mark. Luru also went Serpent's Fang second, which I think is very, very interesting and very good into uh, Ivern specifically. It just entirely negates the shield. And with yeah. the E, if he gets in, it's going to reduce everybody else's shielding. I think it's yeah. actually a really underrated item. Yeah, no, it's a actually really smart pickup. I hadn't got that, um, but it is going to make sure that Luru can basically play Lee Sin as an assassin, and it's been working so far. There's a lot of squishy members. There's basically no tankiness. Warplex still unable to get to that mythic item right now at the 18 minute mark. Um, so there's really nobody that can tank up this damage from Luru. Here comes the dive under the bot lane, but Street Smurf is here on the side. Friendly Voidling doesn't stand a chance, and that is going to be Fang over Fang taking up a little bit of that tower damage. Gonna be two more coming to answer this right now. Warplay trying to find a way in. There's a TP coming in from Anti. His guilty is also there on the wings, trying to conceal himself for the moment. There's going to be 5v4 at this top inner turret. Guilty playing on the wings. There's room for him to get a lot of poke damage. Street Smurf trying to find the paddle star, but he's not going to be able to. And it looks like Daisy is going to be the sacrifice. Oh, good play there from Guilty to find Bloon caught out. There's the stopwatch pop, but I don't see him making his way out of here. Luru, Luru chases hits him the down queue. into the base. And that is another kill picked up just before. No, we're still not even there yet. I was going to say look for Baron, but what's 18 minute game? The po Oh, wait. Okay. The power of vision denial is very, very good there. Uh, Zerath snuck in. Balloon was way too far forward without any vision. And you hit that E. I, I think with this composition, you're just dead. Yeah. And so far, this pick composition has really been what SLR is playing towards. Like, they, they know that they're going to find these windows. They're going to find YOLO not respecting the lack of vision. And they're getting caught a lot for it. And you know what? Luru's doing a lot of damage now. Anti's doing a lot of damage now. Guilty just popped the balloon. And that was it. Uh, it's really hard for SLR to get control of their own jungle right now. I feel like the dragon stacking is really where they're going to run into problems. And though they have that one dragon that they were able to pick up, I, I don't see it being easy for them from this part forward. But... We've said it in draft, we'll say it again now. They do have a composition that fits team fighting better, so maybe around these objectives is going to be where YOLO can start to find their way back into this game. I think the biggest issue they're going to run into is Jax was kind of their split push, so they have, a, you know, Malphite's not going to be able to necessarily respond, right, for the 4v4s that they really want to find. But yeah. with the way it is, almost anybody can match Jax right now. Yeah. Uh, Ante's not going to have to b burn anything in order to get into the team fights, so they're going to... Yolo's going to have to really execute a team fight perfectly. They almost have to play for picks at this point, right? Yeah, and, and anytime they've done that, they've just been getting caught out. I want to say that this is one of the most anti things I've ever seen, but he will, if there is an AP ratio on his champion, he will go Dark Seal. And you may notice, <laughs> he's sitting on 10 stacks of that Dark Seal right now. That's a lot of damage on that Malphite. He's got really big ratios. He's been able to add a lot of damage to his combo because of it. And you were saying, Everyone can match that Jax right now, which is not normally the problem. Normally, you're trying to work out who can match the Jax. The answer is 
anyone you pull out of a hat. So Anti doesn't even need to blow cooldowns to get that Jax out of the side lanes, and then he can TP in, be that big like menace in the team fights that we know Malphite can be. Like you say, they really, on the side of YOLO, have to play these team fights perfectly if they want to find their way back in, but it is just SLR in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, I. it's just, it's hard to see an in at this point, right? It's an 8k gold deficit. They're stacking Hextech Dragon, which is a disgusting dragon. Super, super overpowered. Best dragon, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. If a Moomoo manages to hit a 5-man and Tef gets blown before the ult goes off, they might be able to get some kills. I, yeah. Oh, he bought, he bought the Magi's. I was hoping he'd buy the Magi's. There it is. Anti on the Magi's. All right. So here's what I need is that we already have the vote in place right now in the Twitch chat. We have already got it in place. We've Everyone has already put their money in who we think is winning this game. It's a relatively even pool right now. Um, I want people just in chat. How many stacks is Anti going to have at the end of this game? Because if we know if we know Josh for anything, it's that he can coin flip. He can swing gold. But you're never sure which way it's going to go. So I want I want numbers in chat. How many stacks is he going to have? Let's see. Because it's going to be SLR setting up for this dragon right now. They have that Malphite split push, ironically, in the top lane. Most of SLR just deciding, hey, we're going to try not to contest this dragon. We're not in a good position to do it. They do have warding coverage. Bloom might try and go for the steal. Let's hold on. Now there's four people on the rotate. It's 3v4 if they decide to take this fight. Tef is asleep in the back right now. Street Smurf trying to find damage, but he's not going to be able to. It looks like they're just going to be able to walk out of their guilty. Finding a vision pocket again. And there goes Bloom. Just blowing up on the side. It is godlike for Luru. And now SLR has the option to go to Baron. If that, you know, if I was playing Lee Sen and I started off in a 5 0 misfortune lane, I probably would have tried to FF. But Luther, who is hitting every single Q and just playing fantastically. Big engage oh, now. There's flashes. no chance for Thug Smoke. That legendary rock coming around the corner, gonna shut down that misfortune. Like you said, unable to do anything in these fights. If the Malphite is there, that is two kills picked up. They're gonna go for this inner turret. They have the option to rotate into the bot lane. And I think, you know what? SLR is correctly saying, hey, Team fights are hard for us. Let's not go to these objectives unless we know we have control. They didn't want to give the opportunity for YOLO to take a team fight that might actually favor them at the Baron, so they're just going to keep picking up the standing gold of the turrets. And until Thug Smoke is up, there's really no way for YOLO to contest. What What do you think YOLO has to do in order to turn the tides at this point? That's not, uh, yeah, I mean here's the thing is so when we look at their composition right so Jax will eventually do something right we're at that point eventually he will have some amount of threat um hasn't been able to so far this game but that's going to be valid that is the flash burnt out of anti having to get away from five but i think that's exactly what they need to do they need to try and goon squad use that zoe she can stand in really obtuse positions and try and find those sleepy trouble bubbles there's another one right there just barely going wide to fang over fang who's kind of caught out by himself luru is there now it's the opportunity for warplight to take this engage and i think this is your best chance as yolo you have to try and go for this you know the anti isn't here he is sitting on the sides right now guilty's not here they can't find the engage and now anti with the biggest angle oh, he can for the engage is there Misfortune's already gone, and now the bear slap is going to run down onto the ivor, and that tree is going to get knocked down. It is deforestation from the bear. Jumping down onto Balloon, who's still trying to make a run for it, but it's not going to last too long. Guilty trying to get himself involved with the KP on this fight. Finding Voidling in the back. Another kill, potentially right here. A Q from either of these champions is going to take it, and there it is. Taking my Luru. This has to be SLR ending the game. That was a fantastic ult from Antai. That was a very... And he has 20, med, 20 Magi stacks now. I think he might end with 25. That's my bet. That's your bet? You're going for 25? I'm going I 25. Really, the only bet that I saw was 0, 25, 18, 17. I think there's a lot of people going very positive right now on the Antai. Little engage attempt to hear from Warp like this is desperation mode for him, but he just gets CC'd and taken down. Street Smurf trying to find a way in, and really... I wanted to say this earlier, but this is where Zoe struggles. She needs to be ahead. Always described in RLS, we've always described Zoe as a hammer. Because she's really good when all you need to do is knock down walls. All you need to do is just beat them up. That's all you need. But as soon as Zoe's on the back foot and she has to kite away from fights or she has to start to respect things and she can't be the one in those weird positions finding good amount of poke, it starts oh. to really get difficult. But right now, here's an opportunity for that. Find a way onto Tef. It's going to barely get that ultimate pop. Not quite, but here comes Anti on the back line. It is Guilty and Anti 
TP was burned. They're finding the way in, but Anti walked off the side. I don't know where he is. He's not going to be here for this. This is 4v3. Opportunity to find the kill onto the bear, and they do, but here comes... Oh. Wiping YOLO off the map with a massive unstoppable force onto four, and it looks like it's going to be 25 of those cursed book stacks. I was really concerned about that fight with the way Anti pathed around Raptors, to be honest. It seemed like they might, you know, YOLO might have been able to kind of turn that around, but... Fang over Fang jumps in, does all of their stuff, and yeah, I mean, Anti just gets there in time and gets a four-man ult again. It's like his third one this game. Oh, now they're engaged on the backside. Warplick just trying to thin the wave, and it's going to work out. They've only got two people here to actually try and make this end take, and the respawn timers are going to come through. I think Warplick is going to pay for it with his life. Look at him using the gate and the wall there to lift through this great Q found there from Luri. He's going to clean things up, and now Anti... 1v4 going to try and walk up for this inhibitor. He doesn't have flash, doesn't have unstoppable force. There's room for an engage to come through here. Hugsmoke has to really respect this as here comes the play from 4. Anti is by himself overextended. Those Magi stacks, he is asleep! And no. they are gone! <laughs> that was in gold found onto friendly Voidling. And that's a breath of life they really needed right now. Anti, my bet. That was a fantastic pick, but that is not my 25 Magi stacks. Anti definitely overextended a little bit there for the inhibitor. Uh, it seemed... I, I don't really know what the thought process was on that. Maybe he just gets it and ults out. But Where's, where's Tef? This is 5v3 right now, walking up towards this dragon. Guilty's trying to deny vision. They're trying to start it up with just two. But they have to know that they're on their way. There's going to be no TP for Anti when he respawns. Guilty's in a dangerous position right now. This is how you throw as the team from ahead. But it isn't going to be throws. It's going to be kicks from Lee Sin. Knocking down the members of YOLO. And I feel like they're just trying to give him false hope at this point. There's going to be no pentakill given the opportunity for Luru. And this is going to be soul ignored and the base ignored. Jax is the last thing, thing standing between SLR and a one game. Fang over Fang trying to find his way in. That is the ace picked up for YOLO. And that will finally be game taken up, up for the side of SLR. You know, Escape, I don't think either of us would have guessed that Lee Sin would have 19 kills. Nope, <laughs> especially <laughs> after minute two. I think that dragon fight would have been better if Warplak, unfortunately Warplak had to use his ult uh, when he was fighting, again, <laughs> uh, Luru. But I don't know, that 19 kill Lee Sin is just blowing my mind. Everybody individually had a fantastic game, but I don't see a reason that pick should have worked, and it worked a hundred times better than I could have ever imagined. Listen, they had confidence, and that's why that's all that matters. You have the confidence, that's all you need. I, I do want to say, just because I know that there are some members of you be watching this. I'm not the only one who loses when you're 6 and 0 at 6 minutes, all right? It's not just me. <laughs> everyone, know, we, uh, has, everyone has those games. Wash also actually did that last week against RLS. We were Yeah. <laughs> I had 6 kills and then we lost the game. So, Listen, definitely relate just, to that. Any time that RLS or SLR whatever you want to call it is uh, involved with this type of shenanigans, it seems to swing in a weird direction, but that is a huge moment there um for uh slr just to be able to take that win there we go we got our graphs on screen look at how much damage came out of luru that game he played it fantastically i'm i didn't know what to expect i expected probably the worst thing ever it started off looking like it was going to be doomed and i i don't know i guess just draft diff right yeah. like that was disgusting it is it is going to be absolutely ridiculous it is going to be uh, a win for SLR. I want to say before anyone gets their MVP votes in, remember that Brendan Fang over Fang gave you this draft. Man never makes mistakes, and he absolutely didn't here. We're going to move on forward to an interview with the Rock with a Book. Anti is going to have a little interview after this one, and then we're going to move on to our last game of the day. Please stick around.
Hello folks, Chris Edgeworth here with our third interview tonight, joined this time by anti-top laner extraordinaire, the rock of the top lane, after <laughs> that big win for SLR. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm doing just fine after that one. Uh, my team captain's a little bit upset that I don't have a cold one, but I do got some water. So uh, let's let's dive right into this game. It was interesting on both sides with the draft. Um, I already thought it was interesting with the, the Ivern picked up uh, bef on the first half of the draft for the side of YOLO. And then they also uh, seemed inclined to take this, um, it's hard to say blind, top lane pick with the Jacks. I mean, I'm, mm. wondering, I'm wondering if they thought you were gonna pull out the pocket Volley in some fashion, but of course, then you answer with the Malphite, which shifts up everything when we get this weird bot lane matchup uh, with the Lee Sin Taric, which we can talk about when we get into game a little bit. But talk to me a little bit about overall this draft makeup, what what you might have expected out of uh, YOLO and what you ended up up against. Or what if I'm going to be completely honest, so we have like a lot of plan, oh, actually, a decent amount of planning that went into this draft. Because uh, this is the first time I've played with this team. Like, I don't think I've scrimmed with this team a single time. Uh, I literally just got back from Ohio. It's been like a week since I've touched this game. Uh, but, you know, when we first started the season, we're just like, you know what? We're playing for vibes. We're chilling. Um, so we went into this draft where it's like, all right, well, we're going to pick something funny. Let's let's try and pick Lee Centaric. Uh So we change the entire draft plan around just forcing Lee Sin Tarek. Well, uh, in the end, it seems my audio is a little low. I'll try and keep my mic a little closer. I have to look mm -hmm. into it. But anyway, so, of course, the draft shenanigans uh, play out the way that they do. One thing I do want to talk about um, is, one, one thing that I think bailed out uh, the rough early game that went on in the bot side uh, for the Lee Sin Tarek combo was that uh, you were uh, a one-man army on the top side just sort of dealing with this Jax like it was just not even a big deal and that would enable Fang to be able to make the early visits into the bot lane that right right at the ship I had noted in Twitch chat it didn't work out exactly as I had drawn it up but I, I had said when Lee Sin gets this Dirk online has the ignite in hand level six can actually just like pop the MF 
the second he sees her in a vulnerable position at that point. So um, in the end, of course, did need Fang over Fang to come over and, you know, hold his hand as he crossed the street and look both ways. But um, mm-hmm. he was able to uh, to uh, caddy them along in this. So talk to me a little bit about your role in this uh, in this game and how self-sufficient you were able to be uh, and able your team with your uh, rock solid presence. Uh, I mean, early on, you know, before the game start, that's when everything serious. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to get Pryo until around level five, where, which is when I'm going to have Perma Pryo because that's how Comet Malphite works. Um, I walk into lane level one, throw a Q. Uh, it doesn't get punished. I, I get really confused and just continue to throw Q. Um, and I don't know, the game just kind of kept going on and I got to play Rock and spill the Magi's, and when you have rock and paper, um, it's a little bit hard to find a counter. And it did not bring the scissors in this matchup, which could not have really, no. solved the problem. Yeah, um, I don't think Jax ended up getting a kill until pretty late into the game, which is when I just started flaming my team and we tried to FF. Uh, kind of rough, not gonna lie. Yeah, well, in the end, I mean, you get the last laugh. You did get the 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 win, but in the end, after getting your paper stacked all the way to 25, uh, you stumbled a little bit, my man. What, what happened? Okay, I'm going to be real with you. If my bot lane hadn't given Jax that kill, he wouldn't have enough damage to kill me there. That's all I can really say. I mean, that's... That's the fact. I- ignore me overstaying, purely stat based. I probably wouldn't have died. If there's one thing that I know to be true, it's that top diff is bot diff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there it is. Well, folks, uh, that's it for this interview. Uh, Anti, before we step away, I want to give you an opportunity uh, for uh, any final thoughts, any shout outs, any banter you'd like to leave with us. Uh, you know, this. Uh... Might have been put together kind of at the last second. But in the end, it is still another dub for the Ruby League server. And there it is. All right. Well, SLR Super Late Reveal gets the dub for RLS. And in the end, folks, you got to love it when you see uh, the rock pop off and get the the book stacked. So uh, really fun game to watch. Really enjoyed getting to see your play today, Anti. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. But... That's it for game three. We have one more game tonight for Mythic, so don't go too far. We'll be back with our final game of the week coming up next. <laughs>